case another envelope and what is inside this one machine learning so artificial intelligence is a big thing and machine learning is a part of it this much is clear machine learning is part of artificial intelligence now machine learning is not the final thing from this envelope comes out another envelope and this envelope is deep learning so artificial intelligence is made up of machine learning and a few other things machine learning is made up of deep learning and a few things and the beauty is the deep learning when you pull off then what you find is a treasure neural network you see this treasure patent deep learning is primarily neural networks and within neural network if i open this and something interesting comes out and that is a particular kind of neural network a specific kind of neural network there are many kinds of neural networks as we discuss we'll find out and this one is called cnn not the media channel here in america but convoluted neural network don't be confused convoluted is a particular kind of mathematical operation like plus is a mathematical operator sub uh, subdivision is a mathematical operator multiplication is a mathematical operator similarly convoluted is a mathematical operator and this neural network uses the mathematical operator so a straight answer is artificial intelligence comprises of machine learning machine learning comprises of deep learning deep learning comprises of neural networks and a one particular kind of neural network is which came out of this one and that is cnn so this is the most basic answer to your question what is artificial intelligence now what i gave you is a technological answer in common man's term what artificial intelligence is we take a device take any device it can be a lathe machine in a factory it can be a computer in your house it can be camera in the house it can be mobile phone in the house any device if i give it a capability to do some human task human being see camera can see so if i have a security camera with a program that becomes a artificially intelligent camera so the lemans language is any machine which can perform some task which human beings performed earlier then that has become artificially intelligent device i hope the answer is clear we'll discuss more of this one but before i leave let me demonstrate to you what is artificial intelligence actually because our topic today is artificial intelligence impact on life so i am going to give a command here sitting in my drawing room in california sunnyvale house number 101 hey google switch off the christmas lights the christmas lights are gone hey google switch on the christmas tree lights the lights are switched on hey google switch on the switch off the lights hey google switch on the christmas tree lights every time i give the command it is doing one a specific task instead of me getting up and switching off manually the device called hey google personal assistant 
is doing it for me. Hey Google, switch off the drawing room lights. Sorry, it looks like those lights haven't been set up yet. You can do that in Assistant Center. It does not understand my command, so it is telling me I don't know. Hey Google, switch off the living room lights. Okay, uh, we, we understand. Now, my question to you is, why do we need in artificial intelligence? This work, we can also do switch off or switch on the light. Why we require artificial intelligence and purchase a, a costly devices just to do all this work? It will make us lazy, uh, what, uh, otherwise no exercise. Why we require artificial intelligence on the first place, Dr. Sara? All human beings are not equal. You have asked a very difficult question. Let me conference. Second question is harder than ever many I'll expect. You see, what if I'm a handicapped person? Then many of the tasks which are so easy for you and me who are normal abled persons will become Herculean tasks. So one of the simplest answer and a straight answers is to improve human life of certain individuals, not necessarily every individual. Artificial intelligence, a special kind of a special intelligence is required. The second reason, second reason why we need artificial intelligence is uh, there are many tasks which are repetitive, Mr. Goyal. For example, suppose you are a bank clerk. Your customers brought 2,000 checks today. You have to look at the check, see what is the amount written, then match the signature, and then make a decision whether to honor the check or not to honor the check. That is right. 2,000 times you are doing it. Maybe in one or two cases, you may get tired or your attention may waver. So the task is repetitive. It is boring. On top of it, there is chance that my attention wavers and I may not match the... And then penalty will come on me because fault is traceable. Okay? Now, this is another reason why we need artificial intelligence. And one of the oldest application of artificial intelligence is this CNN, which I showed you, convoluted neural network was developed in 1989 by a man called Le Kun and his team. And they taught the machine to recognize numbers written by human beings. The way you write the numbers is not the same every time you write the number. It is very different than the way I write the number or Mr. Paul writes the numbers. So this was the first artificial intelligence application and here it is that it can do it fast. So cost is saved Profits can increase. And these are the multiple reasons for which we develop artificial intelligence. So you see, it may not necessarily make me lazy because this was just one application. And it was very simplistic you know, answer. Yes. There are beautiful applications. For example, where I am sitting here, the temperature outside is 8 degree. Suppose my old mother was coming. I picked up her from San Francisco airport. I drove for half an hour. 15 minutes more of driving is there. I can tell the personal assistant that switch on the heater in the house so that when I open the house, it will be at a pleasant temperature and mother will be comfortable the moment she enters the house. So these are some of the plus side. Of course, every technology will have a minus side also. We'll talk of that. 
Yes, oh, because yeah, you, you, you rightly said enough. about minus side. I still remember when this, uh, when we learned the tables of math, math mathematics, it was by heart. But the today the condition is uh, even uh, two multiplied by five or six. The 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 B com or M com they use the computer or calculator to calculate. Now tell me one thing. Uh, what you mentioned about uh, the machine uh, learning, deep learning. How artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning differ from each other? Okay, uh, think of artificial intelligence as a great grandfather. Okay, machine learning as father, and then deep learning as the son, and neural networks as the grandson. They are different individuals, but at the same time, they are biologically similar. They share biological characteristic genes, as we call it, chromosomes. They share, so they are part of the same technology. Only thing is, the biggest concept, the broadest concept, is artificial intelligence. Machine learning is a narrower than that, a specific one. Okay, now. this number recognition which i talked about this total thing is called machine learning a computer has learned to recognize digits how did it do it by deep learning now here i will tell you very clearly deep actually has a meaning that if there is a well for example and if there is 20 feet of water then the bottom layer is the deepest layer similarly in deep learning what is deepest okay so suppose this one is number 9 let me write number 9 this is the thermocol number 9 i have written this number 9 i am writing on this side also this is the width okay so this is the length this is the width and this side is the height or depth height length width of this letter this depth which is there i can cut into slices suppose i cut it into 22 layers then the 22nd layer is the deepest one It, literally you can understand this this is how the machine did it took the alphabet and it sliced this and each slice was called a channel so there were 22 channels in the neural network what is neural network is very interesting in 1989 those scientists lekun and his team said that let us imitate human beings human brain so our eyes see things and then they send it through a neural cell to you know a cortex in the mind one area in the mind and that area recognizes a specific parts and those overlap so they took a transistor in a circuit instead of biological cell they took electronic circuit components and connected those electro electronic circuit components to copy the neurons in my mind and the cortex part where vision happens neurons connecting i hope i am making sense to you they copied the neurons 
and the way this made neural network in our physical body biological body brain part was there cortex was there and they had selective functions so this is what they did by creating the hardware and software the softwares were called nodes okay the point hardware software combination were called nodes and nodes became part of the neural network okay so if i have to show it in the simpler way see i am making a node here and three nodes here okay and from this one there is a connection there is connection this is the connection and this one again is connected to all the three so this is the neural network and two layers are there two levels are there so it is two level deep so deep learning you ask me it is two level deep and you know there will be more levels minimum three levels should be there you know and suppose you know this one is again there so from here there come connections from here going connections and from here going connections this is the so this will be the input level these are the middle level and this is the output level so hand written digits will be taken in here processed here through convoluted logic of the machine and at this level the number will be recognized whether it is 7 or 9 if it is 7 this one lights up if it is 9 this one lights up so since we gave the number 9 this will be lighted up here so this is how the deep learning works and this was done okay this was the very first application you know of artificial intelligence okay. later applications were about a speech like hey google no, that, that, that's what i am coming to you now give some real world application of artificial intelligence that's a whole lot of she complained that you gave only half the command okay yeah uh, so, so real world is some real world application of uh, artificial intelligence what, what we are using day in day to day of working or our in daily use and you have any examples which you can give that there the real time world applications of uh, artificial intelligence which we are using apart from shri or alexa any other applications we are using day to day do you use email yeah okay and uh, many unwanted mails come to you that happens no it goes to the junk who is doing that a program which recognizes certain aspects like how many people have been sent that one so you mean to, other, so you mean to say or the programs or uh, computer programs which uh, this uh, computer programmers are making they all all are based on artificial intelligence <laughs> i wish it were that simple <laughs> it is over generalization uh, but this much is for sure all artificial intelligence requires programming but all programming is not artificial intelligence is just like all artificial intelligence requires machine learning there cannot be artificial intelligence without machine learning but all machine learning is not artificial intelligence but but when you are talking about machine learning what are the types of machine learning uh for example my handwriting hmm. text recognition that is one type okay the other one is voice recognition yeah the third one is facial recognition these are three of the biggest ones social media uses all three gmail gmail also uses 
you know, a lot of thing, which is artificial intelligence. You see? So these are most, most common. We'll talk of them more as we go. Okay. But and what I is this? Point uh, is clear. What is the term Q learning in artificial intelligence? Please uh, say it again. Q, Q learning. What is Q learning? Q learning. Uh, it is one particular kind of learning. And basically, you know, uh, a particular kind of learning, let us say uh, there are many languages. Okay. Uh, like English is there, French is there, Hindi is there. So similarly, you can think of, you know, a different kind of uh, learning, which is called by Q learning, a particular type of learning machine. That is, that is called Q learning. Mm -hmm. And now when we are talking about deep learning, you mentioned, mm -hmm. you have explained what is deep learning, but how mm -hmm. it is used in real world. Uh -huh. Okay, let us go back to the same uh, you know, number recognition. Okay, now what will happen is uh, we want that if I show this nine written by 100 people, the machine should recognize it without error. But that is not possible. So we set a limit, okay out of 100 samples, minimum 95 recognize correctly, make mistake only in five. So deep learning is one which makes sure that maximum to maximum correct identifications happen. So this number nine will be broken into three parts, the curve part, the edge part, and the circle string and length thing. So these four components randomized will be there and layer by layer, I said 22 layers were there in the original one. By the time it comes to the 22nd, it will be correctly identified 99% times as nine. Your nine will be different, my nine will be different, but that difference not with the standing, it will correctly identify 99% times, error was only 1%. Today, we are also improving. So deep learning is, you know, okay. that. Okay. Now, you mentioned about the programs that we use, uh, make the program. Which programming language is used for artificial intelligence? Uh, let us say a snake which is very lazy, very large, and swallows whole animals, many times bigger than its own size. <clears throat> that snake is called Python. So Python today is one of the most commonly used one. You know? And the most, most used language for in development, okay. C++ is also very common. I am sure uh, those who understand these languages can understand what is the meaning of the Python language. Uh, because we, at one time, we heard about the Java and all those basic languages. But uh, Python is something which is, uh, yes, definitely a difference. Now, what is the intelligent agent in artificial intelligence and why? where are they used? Uh, <clears throat> they can be the intel, you know, input devices or uh, output devices. So that is that is the most common use of those agents. Simple enough. Like uh, search engines, etc. Information access and navigation, such as search engine, etc. You mean to say? Okay. Correct. How is machine learning related to artificial intelligence? Uh, it is the backbone. Uh, you, you know, uh, the machine acquires a human capability, that intelligence, to make decisions or perform a task. It will not be possible without machine learning. For example, let me say that this number written 
सेवेंटी थाउजेंड टाइम्स ओके वन टू जीरो टू नाइन रिटर्न सेवेंटी थाउजेंड टाइम्स ऑल राइट वॉट इन मशीन लर्निंग वी विल डू इज डिवाइड दैट सेवेंटी थाउजेंड इंटू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फिफ्टी थाउजेंड नंबर विल बी यूज फॉर ट्रेनिंग द neurons neural network all right once that has happened then what we'll do is the remaining 20000 numbers which we know which number is which okay we'll feed it you know for predicting we'll input one and say predict which number is this or identify which number it is so testing and training machine learning is made of those two parts so uh, dr saran if i will talk in uh, the field of medical uh, mm. right now we have seen earlier that radiologist or the doctor used to take the x ray then the expert doctor used to diagnose the the disease then the ct scan came then the mri is or the pet scan too do you think now by the use of artificial intelligence because they can do the slices as you have mentioned and they will come to the deepest thing if we will use this artificial intelligence in the medical field then tomorrow they can replace the doctors because if we have to diagnose in this x ray or ct scan or mri what is the real disease although in some of the cases they are giving but the final diagnosis is with the doctor who is treating you but if we will use the artificial intelligence because what you are saying it goes to the deep uh, thing in that uh, the doctor uh, human brain it cannot reach up to that level which a artificial intelligence can reach so then tomorrow we don't require uh, those doctors we it may be that the, the once a ct scan pet scan has been done immediately the report will come and it will say it will diagnose also whether it, the patient is suffering from cancer or not and which cancer and what is the stage etc etc everything can be given no need of uh, doctors what you say about this doctor sir beautiful question now be ready for a long answer okay if you take a doctor who has just come out of the medical college and give him a simple case of any disease you can be sure the doctor will correctly identify diagnose and prescribe the right medicine now if a junior doctor without much experience can do this and if his professor sits down and writes down on paper that first look at the pulse then ask for a blood test then ask for a Uh, biopsy test and look at those three things and he writes if you find this then this if you find this then this if you find this then this a long list and the junior doctor takes that checklist from the professor and diagnoses the patient without mistake now the junior doctor goes out of the picture and there comes a device computer mobile or any other medical device and that has a python programming or r programming or c++ programming or java programming which is asking those questions if this then this then you see this artificially intelligent uh, medical device is replacing the junior doctor but it is not replacing the senior doctor who looked at that particular type of disease in particular kind of hospital cases and generalize it within the set of the training data which i said in machine language 60000 cases it is able to predict outside that it is not able to do it so few of the people medical doctors it will be able to replace not all of them this is very important i said be ready for the long answer so the long part is this 
that if a man is making his work accomplished by being mechanically oriented only within the limit of what he was taught by his professor in the classroom then he is under the threat of being replaced by an intelligent machine because a computer programmer can talk to the professor and say how do you actually reason it out what is your logic and that professor very well articulates it then the person that person is under dispute but if there is human judgment being exercised by the junior doctor that blood pressure is low blood sugar is high and then there is a cut if i do not stop it from becoming septic life threat is there so here judgment is involved three things are there and if then is not given by the professor the junior doctor himself applies his mind and treats it there will be such cases where artificial intelligence at least at today's level of capability in the silicon valley where i am sitting has not reached that level i don't know when they will reach that level when till they start replacing that one but it is possible today we have reached artificial intelligence where the machine is teaching itself higher level of decision making okay but it is still limited human intervention is needed you and mean to may come you mean to say dr saran that there is a limitation of artificial intelligence like human brain you yes. cannot exceed that <laughs> now you are getting into very complex questions uh, where is the limit of human intelligence see after all uh, human intelligence limit is like a, a third standard student and a, a graduate student there is a difference of uh, his knowledge his intelligence you cannot compare a third uh, st standard student with a graduate student similarly if a artificial intelligence the machine intelligence what we are talking if they will be programmed in such a way that whatsoever possibility the combination permutations are available when we are talking of medical field even that whatsoever this particular uh, uh, result of this particular uh, ct scan or mri or pet scan is whatsoever the possibilities are there might be lacks of the possibilities that can be put in the machine but the human brain is having limitation they cannot think of those 1 lakh or 10 lakhs of possibilities at one time there i am asking you now we are in, uh, getting into very interesting territory sir uh the human brain does something which no other animal is able to do much less a machine what is that what is this picture no other animal will be able to tell i can teach a parrot to say ram ram parrot will repeat ram ram i can teach a horse to jump a hurdle after training horse will jump i can train my dog to pick up the ball and bring it back to me but human beings go beyond what we are taught and that is when i see something then i put 2 plus 2 and reach an inference all right when i see an object then i try to identify it now if it is having a very very deep challenge in it for identification human brain is very good at that the machine has to really sweat a lot to recognize this character by looking for the patterns we do it like this now my question to you is if it is like this now coming to the different uh, uh, application of artificial intelligence we uh, we have seen nowadays the uh, alexa is a very common device which generally now people are using even in india abroad it's a broad it's a very common device in alexa if you ask for any any song 
it will play now today to a human being to remember the entire song uh, lakhs and lakhs of songs is impossible impossible but for alexa or for any uh, device which is using artificial intelligence they will play the entire song that is why i'm saying ki artificial intelligence if the if what you have explained is if it is having that deep uh, uh, thinking and deep intelligence then tomorrow it may replace the uh, human uh, interventions in many 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 fields what do you say about that suppose you ask uh, alexa to play ram kare aisa ho jaye now if there is college student as the predominant audience and you and i the people of age as the audience if it is a human singer it will modulate the delivery and get maximum class from the students and a maximum class from us this is what machine learning has not reached the level today but but that is why because um dr saran that we have not uh, plan program in that way if we will program ki when there is a audience of 30 years of average age you have to play in such a way the the music has to be fast they will play see machine what i understood now from your um, what you have told us earlier that artificial intelligence is whatsoever the programming is to prepared and giving those things they can do it but the advantage is because they are have they can go to the deep things they can analyze many many things depending on the program and you have given the example of python ki how they can swallow everything so once the artificial intelligence if we are using with a device definitely they can use those things which we as a human uh, being we have a limitation we cannot think beyond that or suppose i any if any one will ask how many um, how far is the sky from here yeah, it is an intelligence question but if you will ask how many uh, vehicles are right now in on this mg road from this juncture this junction to this this junction i think the device can tell you you it, it is not possible for us to calculate this do you think it is uh, we can use the artificial intelligence in that we are using it not that we can use so so if we are uh, using it we have gone we have we have gone beyond that here in uh, california you know there is driverless car tesla now you see it is doing much better job but still there is some safety concern and you see it is very a scary situation if you take 1000 kilometers traveled by those auto cars and 1000 kilometers driven by human beings say 1 or 100 their performance record even today in 2021 december is much better than human beings the rate of accidents with those cars is much lower but that is only possible dr saran in usa if you will bring them to <laughs> india and right. a city a, 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 a city small city like mathura and we will ask them to enter in the city inside uh, this automatic cars the auto cars will not work so you are answering your question there are certain human societies where artificial intelligence will because, not because because they know the how to how to work in a disciplined society <laughs> not when somebody else is but still still uh, i feel that uh, uh, we are not using it because we are not accommodating we are not accustomed with these types of devices but the future will be when the when the driverless cars will be the future we have we are seeing all the many of the metros Uh, running uh, in the world are uh, driverless all automatic and uh, few of the places they are already doing it and they are very successful so all those things can be done by the artificial intelligence because they can calculate if there is anything they can stop immediately which even a human brain they says takes time to to uh, put the brakes etc but for a, if if it is a 
driverless uh, metro, if they see something, they can stop uh, immediately uh, that uh, things can be done. Now, I will ask you, what is the strong uh -huh. artificial intelligence and what is the weak artificial intelligence? Well, <laughs> your last question is quite a hint towards this question. A weak artificial intelligence is when very basic things are being done. For example, my car, if it has a light sensor, then at noon, it does not switch on the headlights. But when the evening comes and night comes, then the sensor sees the intensity of light and then switches on the headlights. Or my mobile phone has a light sensitivity comfort setting. When I set that one, during noon, it increases the brightness. And if I am in a closed room, it reduces that one. These functions are, you know, weak applications of artificial intelligence. And disease identification or guiding the rocket to the moon, these are very strong applications. Okay? But between the weak and a strong, there is a middle category. Current status of technology is that actually we have not crossed the middle level. So a strong is a aspirational level of artificial intelligence. We want to reach there. It may take us 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Nobody knows how the technology will develop. But a strong level as of today in 2021, Mr. Goel, is aspirational. We want our artificial intelligence to reach that level. We haven't reached that. Okay. We have at the weak or middle level. Now, when we are talking of artificial intelligence, we mm -hmm. are seeing in the exhibitions and now a uh, few places also, the robots which are working there. Uh, first, my question is, are they based on artificial intelligence? Yes. Okay. What about the emotions in those reports, robots. Like uh, there is a uh, some happy moment is there. Will they start feeling that in artificial intelligence will say now this is a happy moment. If they are in a in a place where some something has come which is a happy thing and they also was is present along with the uh, along with the human being and like human being immediately react with the happy moment. Will they also react for the happy moment or not? Hmm. If you are asking me in 2021 December, my answer is chances are it will not happen. There is no hint of any technological development here or anywhere else in the world that will transfer the capacity to experience emotions in the robots. So far, there is no. We haven't reached that level. But but definitely in no future, we may no reach. But, but at the same time, you know, uh, the 3D printers which have come, once upon a time, they were also seen as impossible. But today, they are possible. Now, now tell me what are 3D printers for the benefit of our viewers? Uh, 3D printer is which can uh, print not only documents but also create objects of interest and this is a special technology machinery can be built by this for example if there is a clutch component which has been stopped being manufactured but my old car needs it 3d printer can take the input of the designer of the engineer take the materials which are there and create that component for me, which I can use in car. So 3D printing has reached that. So, so you mean to say 3D printing is not only a three-dimensional printing on a paper, but creating objects or manufacturing. That, that's right. So, creating objects is the main part of 3D printing. So you mean to say that... Uh,
they are having the all those uh, in heavy duty machines which we used to create that particular uh, part like you have used the word clutch the lathe machines and all those mechanical devices also required for the 3d printing no the, those machines are not required then how they they will create that uh, uh, clutch that is where the magic is that is where the technique is and people are working that your grandmother used to make very nice puris for you and maybe one day there will be 3d printing machines which will make those puris given your mother, mother giving command or you giving the command and it can make those flowers which you the pictures which you send it to me every morning they don't have the fragrance people are working on 3d machines such devices which will not only print the flower on my mobile camera but mobile camera will emit fragrances also okay so uh, so but that, it, is that is yeah, aspirational that is aspirational i understood uh, now it means like tomorrow we are seeing the advertisement either on newspaper or television and we see advertisement of a car now by using this 3d printing as you mentioned with the artificial intelligence tomorrow sitting in our drawing room watching the tv we can experience the car we can touch it we can feel it everything we can do except that we cannot take out uh, from the in the television something like that uh, is it possible with this uh, 3d printing no it is not 3d printing technology it is a different technology we call it virtual reality and augmented reality so people who play games use it a lot and games also have lots of artificial intelligence today the complex games which you see the children playing on computers and actually game consoles and you must be seeing some professionals like architect architects when they want to show you their plan of your future house they don't only show you blue prints and uh, plans and uh, different views they have you know those uh, virtual reality glasses augmented reality glasses and through which they can show you okay this is your kitchen this is where you know this equipment is and those things so uh, more than artificial intelligence those are applications of augmented reality ar and virtual reality vr so, and they also have that is also of the artificial intelligence they use But, the base yes it has, it has some amount of artificial intelligence yes It now does. tell me what is nlp what are the various components of nlp when we talk about the in correlation with the artificial intelligence the full form of nlp is natural language processing some people call it natural language programming now the application you just saw in the beginning when i told my personal assistant i'm not taking their name because it is you know asking for the command also i'm not giving any command but i gave it a command to switch on a particular kind of a light when you come to my house and you give that command and when i give the command when mr sharan gives the command when my daughter in law kristen gives the command when my son gives the command every time it follows the command how is it happening you speak differently your pronunciation is different your voice pitch is different voice quality is different you see the problem for you and me it is so natural anybody is speaking we recognize it but for that machine that is a problem you understand my point now this problem is solved through the nlp discipline or technology or expertise and this is part of artificial intelligence it is clear no uh, yes i got it right right in your, right in your resort if pavitra gives the command or ruby ji gives a command you give the let's command. not use the names but yes i got your point now now i am asking you uh, 
what are the some misconceptions about um, artificial intelligence there are lots of misconceptions are there can you give us those misconceptions the first of the misconception is about these components you know people think this neural network or this one are two separate things or for that matter this machine learning is different from artificial intelligence no they are not separate this is the very first one they are connected and they are part and parcel but they have differences they are not the same thing so this is the first misconception second misconception is that they will replace human beings this is the biggest one they are you know doing this to some extent and you see the computerization was resisted by bank employees in the 80s and 90s you remember those days yourself now that time artificial intelligence was nowhere close to where it is in 21 but still computerization was equivalent of artificial intelligence in those days and it replaced human beings and replaced quite well it did more work with less cost cost came down efficiency increased productivity increased and today the computerization in general adoption of artificial intelligence in particular is reaching those heights precisely because of the benefits they are doing and here is a subjective estimate of mine if computer technology had not come in the time which it has come then today many of the comforts and luxuries or necessities of life which you are enjoying even common person is enjoying will have been out of bounds look at the things which a rickshaw puller enjoys today and compare with what the 200 years ago kings used to enjoy you see the difference in technological benefits in general and computer technology in particular so i think i now think now you mentioned about the humans that uh, the art uh, the myth is that artificial intelligence will replace the humans completely why not my question to you is tomorrow if a programmer program in such a way to a computer with using the artificial intelligence that you can tomorrow upgrade yourself automatically the program is such which is upgradable uh, to face any situations and tomorrow they can replace the human being why we and and it is coming many times we have seen although right now it we are seeing in the science fiction movies etc but it is come many things are coming in reality like now the uh, earlier we used to see in our childhood a self drive car a car driverless car now it is a reality so it's gradually gradually if if everything will be uh, fair to the with the help of artificial intelligence some uh, they, they will do the programming themselves if we will make the computer to understand that they can do the programming i am sure their programming will be superior and better uh, than the human being and definitely they can create the the robot far more Uh, superior with a more um, um, whatsoever bytes they have or whatsoever intelligence they have that they can think many more faster things and faster uh, uh, storage or more storage than what we can prepare what you say about that uh the cost of doing that one is prohibitive no see dr saran there is a difference tomorrow when 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 us and uh, russia came to ussr at that time decide to come for do for the space uh, thing they they thought that we will go to the moon everybody used to laugh how it's a very expensive thing wastage of time and money etc etc and today i just uh, got a breaking news that tomorrow one of the spacecraft has entered in the sun uh, uh, orbit which is for the first time in the 
history. So tomorrow it may that uh, right now we think that we cannot land at the sun. Tomorrow something will be created which will land on the sun also. So my point is cost is not the factor. The factor we would we want to know. I want to know, or our viewers want to know whether the artificial intelligence one day can replace human beings completely or not. Sir, this is what I am saying. the cost will be prohibitive and we haven't created that kind of wealth in our economy of any country to be anywhere near that uh, let me elaborate my point here little bit you know this bank teller who used to look at your check bank clerk who used to look at the check and uh, go, you know honor it today you are doing online banking no person is involved you are doing this one no problem but has it replaced human beings from the banks no the back office is needed now the bank has more people employed today to support that banking software core banking software which gives you the online capability yeah yeah so yes doctor sir we are changing. we are having that back office human uh, uh, intervention is there but tomorrow the programming can be prepared for the back office also that they the backups will be also done by the uh, computers by the robots instead of human being and if anything goes wrong they will be doing automatically uh, in is like a like in a plane whenever there is a some emergency immediately it come on the autopilot from the pilot uh, thing and then so anyway uh, you you mean to say it is it is expensive and it's beyond right now we can think now the another myth is artificial intelligence is dangerous for human being yes 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 and we have to be taking it very very seriously mr goel because there are questions of human ethics and values the way we have eroded our values you see all those hacking things which happen you see all of those you know personal information stealing which happens taking your money from you happens and much worse people have reached a level where they can have tiny drones with lethal capability to kill a specifically A, an individual whose facial things and all other data are fed and the damn thing is artificial intelligence it says okay mr goel was going to bombay now he is uh, change his ticket airline reservation says now he is going to calcutta he will change his route not go to bombay to chase you go to calcutta to chase you means once it is programmed and let you know god only can say so you mean to say uh... artificial intelligence can be used for good and bad oh, uh, so or both sure, sure, okay sure now another myth is that uh, artificial intelligence will take your job today i am sitting here talking to you tomorrow some robot is sitting here asking this questions to you here I'm, my role is over similarly professors in the classrooms tomorrow today we have seen this online time that online earlier one professor is required or a teacher is required for a class of 40 50 60 students now today one teacher can teach lakhs of students across the globe sitting at one place similarly the artificial intelligence when it will be it can also teach because you said uh, 60000 now one like uh, you being a professor you learn something similarly if the program is in made in the computer in such a way that all the things about the management about the engineering everything is fed there then by using that 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 computer can teach the students that in case of this if you will put the bridge uh, you are constructing a bridge if the angle will be slightly like this these are the complications so you have to use this material you have to do this in instead of professors uh, the myth is that the uh, and i will tell you the example many a few of the airports are using the artificial intelligence where 
when you are going uh, for the your immigration even they don't want anybody they just you just raise your face and they just see your face and they ask you to go immediately the door is open because they have the face recognition earlier they used to be a person sitting asking you questions putting the stamps etc now there is no nothing is required because they just see and they immediately ask you to go this and they, no one is there so don't you think the in india which is full of uh, crisis is the job <laughs> lawlessness and if the artificial intelligence will be used what will be the future uh, for those who are seeking the jobs today uh, they will all be jobless because all these works even um, you might have seen that uh, some uh, um, i will not uh, the helper they used to got helper which is sweeping your uh, house it is available now in india and us it's very common that they just uh, command and that is also to command please clean the drawing room and that they are cleaning the drawing room uh, sitting from anywhere as you have mentioned that you can command that uh, switch on the heater or or open the garage everything can be commanded so my point is don't you think it's a threat for the humans what your human will do you see i am smiling and listening to your question you see you yourself said that self driving cars will not be a success in india because people jump the red light they come in the wrong lane also all right cattle are on the road so artificial intelligence cannot you know answer to these human vagaries at all secondly you said the teachers can be replaced yes those teachers who are not applying their mind fully see the moment you told me and i decided to make this props we call them props now i had to think a lot you see i had to collect materials from the scrap everywhere there i had to ask my daughter in law for these materials and i collected this is the beauty where machine and human interaction can be complementary and this is the bane where human machine interaction can be a daunting task so this is the most important point to keep in mind in our discussion on artificial intelligence remember this artificial intelligence is a beautiful thing if your philosophy is that it is improving the human life but if you have adverse view of this technology like you said right in the opening it can make us lazy why should we not go and open this one so without beauty of human beings the creations of human being and artificial intelligence is creation of human being so those factors are most important in our discussion today that the beauty of humans the glory of humans is never reduced by artificial intelligence beauty of human beings power of human beings glory of human beings in enhanced by responsible use of artificial intelligence this is what i want to mark and if there is unethical people cruel people heartless people idiotic people destructive people then like nuclear technology they will destroy cities like hiroshima and destroy mankind and destroy a lot of things which is already taking place by abuse of technology so abuse has to be prevented when artificial intelligence is being developed being supported being deployed and being encouraged so this is the most important point in our discussion today and i am sure the opportunity came the viewers will realize artificial intelligence is like any other technology it is just different and it has power of mind boggling scale but basically is there human beings will be the masters will be the masters yeah, but my next question is can artificial intelligence take over the world yes hmm? it has no will they take over the world complete world 
if you will if you will um, like we have seen in the science fiction movies uh, many times that how they they computers robots are coming doing all the machines are doing the work ultimately some hero comes and uh, save the world that is a separate thing but as you rightly said there are crooked persons there are those who are unethical persons if they program in such a way and tomorrow uh, they can start gulping the countries what do you say about that you see i said yes and what i am going to point to you in support of my answer is look at the factories which manufacture silicon chips and silicon printed circuits do you realize they are the most automated factories robots are already doing the work there will be unimaginably unbelievable number of human beings there in that factory billions of dollars of production happens every month in those factories and number of human beings is not even in thousands it has already happened but to see the crisis which is happening the whole world is connected and if one of them falters you see the car manufacturers are facing a nightmare situation because they kept on putting a lot of artificial intelligence in their machinery for saving cost for improving the profit but what has happened what has happened the supply chain has been disrupted and thank god now the artificial intelligence is in the low and medium level it hasn't reached the a strong level as i said so it cannot cure the problems which we are facing so those intelligent robots which clean our house will not be manufactured if human beings are not there even if they are in hundreds and thousands so those this is very important point heartening point in our discussion it must be noted because people debate this one and never reach a conclusion today we want to point the conclusion here today we want to say in mr lal goel's conference on thought leadership that mark my words certain number of individuals in different countries in different societies will be beyond the reach of the strongest of the artificial intelligence i can say that with certainty i am a follower of aristotelian i know what is the non contradictory inference so i am saying this one but at the same time let me caution my viewers and everybody in china the biggest nightmare is if you are a dissident god bless you the facial recognition technology and deployment of that technology in that country and similar countries with the help of israeli artificial intelligence programmers who have no ethics in selling any technology to anybody for any use you mean this is the pega pegasus was also a artificial intelligence uh, spyware which can uh, spy anything okay now at the end i want to know now artificial doubt today is our main question remains what is the impact of on life in artificial intelligence impact on life of a human being the impact is like a two edged sword it is like a chemical which in the hands of a competent doctor can save life and in the hand of a ruthless individual can take lives and therefore there are both extraordinary blessings of this technology for human beings across countries across economic status and across across all social differences 
but at the same time if we are faltering in on our you know political systems if we are not respecting human rights if we are not respecting human life if we are not respecting human property if our corruption is rampant if our morals have been compromised then this technology can compromise the quality of life a standard of life freedom and property will be exposed this can help the crooks a lot and crooks are also intelligent people we have a saying in hindi ek to karela tita dooje neem chadha so if a brilliant crook and they have really been you know playing havoc they you know go for ransom call by compromising the networks of developed countries america suffered so those things will keep on becoming real real nuisance and things like that and in that sense what i say is many a time lack of prosperity is a blessing final thing which i want our viewers to notice is artificial intelligence requires computers computers require internet to have their power the best of the applications require internet connectivity in india and much of the world there is even today lack of access to internet so therefore these things are kind of a blessing in disguise that never ever a computer will be able to rule all the world it will be at worst be able to rule only the connected by internet world by telecom world others it will not be able to reach so this is it our world is made in such way mr goel that most of the myths can be intelligently answered that fear is very real many countries are suffering <clears throat> and large number of people are suffering today nobody is safe your life is absolutely no private life everybody knows a lot more about you than you know yourself but thank god some checks and balances are there so artificial intelligence with checks and balances should be our goal not a rampant artificial intelligence never never so never. Uh, so uh, we can proudly say that uh, uh, this um, artificial intelligence is a good tool to be used yes. but it we should not make it a master yes never never okay never. now uh, uh, because we have some more time i would like to know by using the artificial intelligence can we go back in the that uh, say 500 or 1000 years back and see what we were or we can go in the future there is used to be a science fiction movie of time on this thing that that we can go to the back or, or in the future and we will see what is going to happen in future i think one movie hindi movie also came krish or some name uh, that uh, where the rithik roshan was there and how they have seen the future of the by using the artificial intelligence is it possible or not it is such a beautiful question i think i will like to give it due respect so there is a story about raja janak father of sita a story goes that one night he was you know having a dream that a enemy king has attacked his kingdom and he has defeated and now he has put his sword on his neck and says i'll kill you but since you are a king i am not killing you but only thing is everything that you have is mine property is mine everything is you just bear person leave the kingdom his kingdom was big for 3 days he was crossing crossing when he needed some water or something his subjects abandoned him worrying that if they helped him the new king will take it out on them so without food without water 3 days he came out of the you know kingdom and then there he saw 
that there was one person distributing hot rice. So he went there. He says, bring a pot. So he found a pot on the ground and he took it there. His bad luck. By the time he reached there, the rice was over. So he says, you know, I have that soup, water from that one. Shall I give you? He took that one. He was going to take a sip. When a kite came, dived, and the earthen pot fell on the ground, broke it. That is when he woke up. Then he went to his, you know, called his uh, 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 Rishi and asked, what is this? What did I see? Which is true? So, you know, the uh, Rajguru asked him, did you experience fear? He says, yes. Did you fear, experience worry? Yes. So he says, since you experience things, so that is true. So uh, Janak asked, but what is this? He says, this is also true. So this is, Mr. Goel, the answer to yours. Seeing the future, seeing the past, both of them are true in metaverse. Facebook has changed its name. So universe is now metaverse. In the metaverse, both will be true. I hope my answer is clear and straight. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sudhi Saran, for giving the straight answers. Although it's a, such a vast thing, uh, if we will go, more two, three, four, or man, many more programs can be done only on this thing because so much can be dug out. But I'm sure today's program is quite enlightening, and our viewers who are watching our show might have got at least some idea about the artificial intelligence, if not the complete idea. But still, whatsoever doc, questions which I asked, although sometimes I feel that I am doing some unjust, asking some unjustification of viable questions to Dr. Saran, but he has tried his best and replied uh, all the answers very straightforwardly. So thank you very much, Dr. Sudhi Saran, for uh, giving uh, your answers and enlightening us, all of us, and uh, I'm sure that these types of programs in our thought leadership series are quite enlightening because the expert, those who have authority can speak and give the guidance to all of us, those who are not authority in this field. But at least today's program is quite enlightening. And uh, uh, we hope that in future also, whenever we will come out for a thought leadership series, such type of experts will give their uh, uh, expert opinions on different topics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sudhir Saran, for joining and giving your replies. And thank you all the viewers for watching our show. And viewers, we are doing this program almost every day. And we want your comments. Because of you, we are doing it for last more than 20 months continuously. If you will want, you can put the comments either on V4 uh, new, uh, V4 streams comment box or the Karu news comment box or global TV comment box or any of the channels, wherever you are, please put their comments so that we will get more feedback and we can improvise our programs accordingly. Thank you very much. And thank you all the viewers for watching our show. Thank you. Thank you.